guys, my name is Delisha, stage name Deli Ann. I grew up in South Africa and I grew up in a very loving and supportive family. I love Jesus <laughs> and I love to sing. I completed my high school in South Africa and then I went on to further my studies at University of KwaZulu-Natal where I did a Bachelor of Social Science degree in Marketing Management and Psychology. After that, I went on to study a postgraduate in Education. In 2015, I got the golden call. I got the call for Emirates Airline. I was selected to be a cabin crew. It was my first time to leave home and move abroad. I was really excited. It was an answered prayer and a dream job. So yeah, I got that call and that is how I actually left South Africa for the first time. I was in Dubai for like two years. It was an amazing experience, so amazing. That season of my life really blessed my family and really blessed me. And then I was there for two years and in a 2017 I left and then I went back home and then I continued in the education field and even in that season of my life I really enjoyed it because I knew that there was purpose even in that season. I was grateful for that time of my life as well and then I was like oh my goodness I actually miss flying so I was like okay let me try. So I tried for Qatar Airways and that is how I got into Qatar in 2018. I just, I just love singing, like I think I was a child, maybe around the age of six or seven. So I really just love singing. I don't know how it happened and I don't even understand it, but I just love singing. I don't know if I could sing, but it was people who told me. And the amazing thing is that when I sang, it was very similar things that were said from people. Like for example, they'd be like, oh wow, Delisha, we actually feel something when you're singing. You have a gift. There's an anointing in your voice. That's how it finally settled in me that, okay, maybe there's really something here. I just grew to love singing and then on radio those days, because we had cassettes and tapes like in those days, but I'm not that old. <laughs> so I used to listen to Mariah Carey and then I just used to like sing over her stuff. And yeah, I just, um, I really enjoyed singing from there. And then I think once I took it more seriously, I started getting involved in like church choirs and stuff like that. This one is going to be a long one. <laughs> I hope you have your tea and you're ready to listen. <laughs> From a very young age, I've always been someone who loved worship. Growing up in a Christian home, yes, going to church and stuff like that. That's what I really connected to, even as young as I was. Also, I love singing, so I was just like worshipping and singing and it was just a good combination for me. I always felt fulfilled. I always felt like there's something that I'm feeling and at that time, you know, I didn't understand it, but I know it was the presence of God that I was feeling. It was later on in my life when I got to an age of understanding, when I accepted the Lord as my personal Savior, my Lord and personal Savior, I got saved. And then um, there was a total transformation there with my life now, consciously knowing the decision that I made, you know, having that understanding. And after that, like everything I wanted to do was just to be on fire for God. Like everything I wanted to do was just for God. And uh, that's how it went. Like I even remember in school, I would get mocked a lot because people would be like, oh my gosh, this girl, she's so serious. She's all about God. And um, they'll be like preaching the word of God holier than thou. Even in that time, it was also training for me as young as I was in my walk to not be ashamed of the gospel, to be bold even as young as I was, to stand for what was right. So there was things I would do differently just because I just had that heart to do things differently for Christ. Many people didn't understand it. They're like, you're so young, go have fun, go do this, do that, go drink, go to the clubs, you know, go and have fun. Like, what are you wasting your time on, you know? But there was just something deep down inside of me. Like when I made that decision, that personal encounter with the Lord, it just changed me from the inside out. Even as young as I was, I even watched a documentary on Truth Behind Hip Hop and that also turned my mind around with secular music. So even in that time, like for me, it wasn't really a problem. Like I wouldn't mind uh, only listening to gospel. I rather would have preferred to listen to things that would feed my, my spirit and build me up and equip me. My first time that I actually attempted the gospel industry, when I started writing my own gospel music, there was a man by the name of Marlon. I will always be grateful to him. He played a huge role in my life. I was just, I think, 15 or 16. I was singing at a youth concert, yeah, with a very dear friend of mine named Nika. 
with a beautiful voice. We love to worship together, so we, we were singing at this concert. And the song we sang was, I Get On My Knees. And um, Marlon, uh, after the, the concert, he came to speak to me and he's like, hey, would you like to come to studio and record? And I was like, what? That's amazing. So that is where my journey started when I started writing music and I was writing gospel music. And also another thing that comes to mind is like from a very young age, I think I was like around 12, a man of God that came to preach, he called me out of the crowd and then he's like, there's a calling in your life. When you sing, people are going to be touched, people are going to be blessed. There's healing that's going to be happening, there's transformation that's going to be happening. People will be encouraged, you'll be like a hope and you'll be used for the glory of God. That was just overwhelming for me. It was so beautiful. So that word stayed with me from a very young age. So when I finally got to the age of understanding, when I finally gave my life to Christ, I was like all out for God, like so on fire for God. So I wrote the songs in the studio with Marlon and uh, it was absolutely amazing. I didn't know I could do those things and it was just a beautiful, beautiful season of my life, which I'll always be grateful for. We did a few songs. One of them got released and um, it's doing very well it's playing on radio in South Africa after that like I actually left abroad <laughs> so that is where the music part of me had literally come to an end when I moved abroad in 2015 I left abroad in 2015 I moved to Dubai and then after that I was up and down I moved to Qatar after that in uh, 2018 since that time I'm still there now music was put on a hold for me so everything that I had done back in South Africa all came to a stop. It was very difficult to continue back and forth, back and forth. So it just stopped, you know, and life got so busy with my career as well, flying around the world, traveling, which was amazing, but it just didn't happen. So it was 2022. I left Qatar Airways. I knew that that season in my life was also over and I needed to move on to other things. So I was trusting God for direction and stuff like that and the way to go. Cause once you are in that job, it's very hard to leave because it's very comfortable, very luxurious, even with its challenges and stuff. But I mean, it's still a dream job. The end of 2021, it was a very, very, very difficult time for me in my life where I literally reached rock bottom. And you know, when a person reaches rock bottom in their lives, there's no going any further than that. The only way out is looking up. You know, when you feel like you're in, a, in such a deep hole, and you don't know how to get out. You wanna get out, but you don't know how to. And then you're having all these mixed emotions. Sometimes you wanna stay there because it's comfortable. And then sometimes it's like, no, you're not supposed to be there. You need to get out of it. So it was like a tug of war. And this is what was going on. It was like warfare, like a fight against, you know, my spirit and my flesh. It all started because it came from the root of pain. This had opened a lot of doors um, for brokenness. I started, just becoming something I'm not. I gave up on being a good person. It came to a place where I couldn't even believe the person I was becoming. Everything that I believed in from a very young age and I tried to protect myself from, I was literally walking into those things. Now, everything that I tried to protect myself from, I was doing. It was a complete change. And also in that season of my life, I was so blinded. The devil really, really deceives you know the word of god speaks about the scales on our eyes it really happens these things that happened to me in my life i never thought that it would happen to me out of all people me someone that loved the lord so much and they had such a close relationship with god walking with god every day but anyway it happens so it happens to the best of us it's like a place where i just completely lost myself i started doing things that i know i shouldn't have been doing and trying to fit into places where I know I was not called to be in. Even in the rush of things and whatever that was going on, I still felt empty. I still felt so uneasy. I never had peace for a very long time. I never knew what happiness felt like. All I felt was pain and suffering. It was so bad because I also turned away from God and my heart was so hard. I couldn't even pray. I couldn't even sing like I, I wouldn't even put my foot in the church because I was so hurt. I know that the enemy was just using these things, you know, as blockages. The way I was living my life, if God had to come down on the clouds now and come take his children, I know for a fact I would have not made it to heaven at that moment. That was a very, very difficult season in my life. Um, then in 2023, there was some sort of shift happening in my life, but I was still like, mm, you know, walking, like I was not paying attention. There was even times where I would just sit and then I started praying. Like I started like actually opening my mouth and speaking. 
but sometimes I would I just cry. Sometimes we don't even have words, but there would be the still small voice saying to me, come back to me, my child. Come back to me, my child. I've never left you and I never will. I was like, mm, I'm enjoying my life in the world. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm enjoying just, you know, I will in time and all of this, there's always a time, but guys, time waits for nobody. Each day is a gift and each day is so important to live with purpose and with good intention to know that you never know when it's going to be your last. In 2023, later on in that year, I was getting like some dreams. Like I tend to get uh, a lot of dreams with the end times, but this time I got a dream. I remember it clearly like it was yesterday. I was like somewhere in an amazing apartment and I was overlooking a beautiful view and enjoying having the time of my life. All of a sudden I'm hearing a trumpet sound and then I'm like, oh no, is it really happening? Oh no, 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 it cannot happen right now. No, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And then I see God coming down in the clouds and he's coming towards me and I see his face right in front of me and then I see a tear fall down from his face and then he just turns his face away and he goes away. I just, I never had peace after that dream because I knew that God was telling me please come back to me where you are right now is not where you're supposed to be come out just as you are with all with all your sin with all your faults with all your failures just come back to me so I can make you whole again I can heal you I can restore you I can set you free I can deliver you from your pain and your bondage you just have to say yes to me that like really bothered me a lot and then you know life went on and things went on and i was still in a state of mind that's why i say the enemy is a liar and the mind is a battlefield and when you are blinded you are deceived of course i wasn't like operating in the things of god because i was now far from god and i made that choice for myself yet i knew better i caused it for myself i made choices for myself but i did it out of pain i went home for vacation to see my family and my family could see that i wasn't myself they could see your delicia has changed like she's just not the same girl that that we we know you know so many friends of mine i had very dear friends praying for me during the season of my life oh my goodness which i'm so grateful for they never gave up on me in that i truly saw the love of christ in them because there were so many times when they could have given up on me they understood i was in a very 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 dark place and they've seen me in a better place before so they knew that this is not the girl that delicia is and then I went home for vacation and I remember my, my dad called me to the room and he's like, my child, I need to tell you something. I need to share something that's very heavy on my heart. And I feel like the Lord is saying that he's turned his face from you. And I literally had that dream before my father had said this to me. So it really hit me and I was like, there's no way I can play games with God anymore. I need to get my life right with the Lord. Eventually something very traumatic uh, happened towards the end of 2023 while I felt God was doing a shift in my life and then I had to go home that season of whatever was going on there that is a time when I truly said okay God this is it because what I had experienced at that moment of my life nobody can tell me that God is not real nobody after what I experienced what I saw what we had to go through, the warfare, the spiritual warfare, realizing how real it is and me going there, not even being built up and prepared, but God had placed me in that situation, knowing that I will come out of it stronger. That changed and shifted my whole life. I finally got to a place when I said, Father God, I fully surrender to you, Lord Jesus. I give everything to you. I give up this life that I'm living. And there was two things that were holding me from moving forward into the things that God had for me. One, I started doing secular music and then it was doing very, very well. It was in the top 40 charts of East Coast Radio in South Africa and playing 
around nationally. My dreams were coming true. I was happy. I was finally singing and doing music again. I was doing live performances with an amazing band and getting paid really well. I had a big show that actually I was um, going to go back to Qatar for. And all the posters were out and everything was out, you know, for me to go and perform. But even in that, I had to dress a certain way. I had to be a certain way. And yet inside of me, I knew this is not Delisha. And it meant so much to me though, because I really loved music, you know, and finally I was able to sing and do these shows that was one thing that I had to make peace with to let go of and the other thing was I was in a relationship and I had to let go of that as well I'm not saying this was easy this was not easy at all the scriptures that came to me was Matthew 6 33 that says seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else will be added and the other one was 1 Samuel 15, 22, which says obedience is far greater than sacrifice. I was reminded that yes, in my full surrender unto the Lord, I have to sacrifice. I would have to give up these things that are not leading me into the purpose and into the perfect will and plan that God has for me. And even if it doesn't make sense, because it didn't really make much sense at the moment, but I also felt that tugging in my heart. And he's like, just let it go. I have something so much bigger for you, something way beyond your imagination. What I had learned in that process was, you know, obedience is far greater than sacrifice. And that helped me to let go of the things I needed to let go of and truly trust him for what is ahead. A very, very special friend of mine told me, Delisha, if you ever give anything up for the Lord, it's never a loss, it's always a gain. Even in that time when I let go of those things, God knew how dear music was to me. And I had prayed and I said, Father, I trust you. Your word says that your gift will make room for you. And if you've truly called me, Father, to be a vessel of honor for your glory and for your kingdom, then use me. I'm available to be used for your glory, to have that servant heart to serve, so that people can be blessed and touched. That's what I, I was trusting the Lord for. After making the decisions that I did, I couldn't be more happier. I have no regrets. I finally feel joy again. I finally feel peace. I finally feel happiness. I finally feel free. I am literally walking in answered prayers. There's so many to be honest, but um, from a very young age, from my childhood, I really admired Carrie Job. I love the way she loves Jesus. I love the way she worships. And she really has such an anointing. From a very young age, I was very, very blessed um, listening to her music. It really encouraged me as well when I went through a difficult time in my life. She's always like Holy Spirit led when she writes her music. And I know also she was like waiting on the Lord and trusting God for her husband. So there's a lot of similarities there. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's definitely one. Anatoria, she's so amazing. Oh my goodness, she really inspires me as young as she is. She's like a ball of fire, like <laughs> if that's the correct word to use. But she's got such a beautiful, powerful voice and she's just so full of life and energy. She really encourages me and inspires me a lot. So there's Nathaniel Bassi, Ada Ehi, Moses Bliss, Prince Emmanuel, Great Manta Kiti, Victor Thompson, T.Y. Bello. Yo, the list can go on and on and on, actually, to be honest. Yes, guys, my Niger people. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so yes, as I was telling you about my management team, Oryx Group, they are the reason why I am here in Nigeria. We've been doing music production. They've got me to work with the best of the best, which is Gospel on the Beats and his team. It's just been an incredible journey as well. Also, we're able to attend a listening party for Great Men Takiti and Gospel on the Beats, the ghetto gospel. We also went to the African Praise Experience. Yes, tape. <laughs> and it was just so amazing. It was my first time and I was able to meet Evan Rocks. Amazing, amazing. And I also met Moses Bliss. So that was just, wow, that was like, amazing for me um i really enjoyed those moments and it's moments that i'll always cherish for the rest of my life especially in this industry i think it was a beautiful experience and of course i ate all the jollof rice that i could eat <laughs> well i've learned some pigeon words <laughs> That is quite exciting for me because I came here and I didn't really know anything like, you know. Also, I wanted to really 
understand Afrobeats because music is such a beautiful thing and I think like doing gospel music words that that can bring life to somebody you know and encourage them and lift them up and glorify the name of the lord because it's god who's given us the gift so it's like me giving the gift back to him saying okay lord here's my gift father do what you need to do with it it's so amazing that we can write beautiful songs beautiful gospel music in different genres i think that's really cool so i wanted to try out afrobeats um something really new to me we came here with that intention and we are leaving with an amazing amazing finished product that's really been something that i've really enjoyed in nigeria i had to learn like you know different techniques and stuff to understand the amazing craft so yeah that was really interesting for me as well first and foremost what I would like to look forward to is that I continue to keep my eyes fixed on Jesus and walking into the purpose and perfect world that God has for me on this journey. And what you should be looking forward to is the listening party for my EP that will be released soon. And there's four amazing songs that will be released. And I'm so excited for you guys to hear what we've been cooking up. You guys should be looking forward to international touring. You should be looking forward to me working with different amazing artists, collaborations. And you should be looking forward to more albums. Taking the time to, to listen to my story. <laughs> but um, I just want to encourage you, um, if my story touched you in some way or the other i hope that whatever it did cause something to happen in you there's always hope and no matter what you're facing in life you will get through it just look ahead and look forward and keep your eyes on christ and you're going to be fine he's so faithful he's a faithful god guys if you want to continue to follow me on this amazing journey which means so 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 much to me of walking in answered prayers Please continue to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter. I truly believe that you will be blessed by the music that's about to be released. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the love and support. My precious family and my friends, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. My management team, Oryx Group, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. God bless all of you. Lots of love.